everybody welcome back i'm so glad you came back and decided to join me for day two of our devotional influencer finding truths in trends so yesterday on day one we dealt with the topic avoiding the performance trap where we looked at the idea of being performative for other people in our pursuit of being influencers and the fact that our justification does not come from other people our perfection does not come from us no matter how much we try to filter ourselves and cover the blemishes that is the job of the lord and we must look to his grace to be sufficient for us and to make us sufficient for the call that we have on our lives so day two of our devotional deals with the topic growing influence growing admiration i'm sorry so let's go ahead and deal with our scriptures there are two today john chapter 6 verses 14 through 15 when the people saw the sign that he had done they said this is indeed the prophet who is come into the world perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself for context this is happening right after jesus has fed the five thousand with five loaves of bread and two fishes now don't get me wrong a loaf of super soft and a box of pan trout that'll feed a whole whole lot of people but not that many so he has performed this giant miracle and he has done a big deal the people know that it's a big deal and they want to make him king you know this guy is literally the greatest thing He's literally the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let's make him king. But Jesus withdraws um, because he is careful not to exalt himself. And we'll get into that in the devotional. Then Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? God bless the reading and the hearing of that word. So let's look at the devotion. It used to be that someone was considered an influencer if they beat extraordinary odds, pioneered an industry or held a powerful position not anymore now if you can get a few thousand people to follow you on social media you are automatically deemed an influencer as the term loses its impact how can believers maintain a high standard as part of our godly mandate to make disciples while in this world but not of it this really spoke to me so i am not yet i think a nano influencer but i am working toward that i don't know what you would call me but it's easy so easy to rate your influence or your importance in the world based on that number at the top of your instagram profile but i'll tell you guys my friends um i don't want i do want those numbers because those numbers do mean things but that is not going to be the totality of my influence I want to weigh my influence by the impact I have on people's lives. Whether I have a thousand followers or 10,000 followers, to me, it means less if I have not made your life better or, as I've said before, made sure that you know 
that you matter, which is tied to my call in Christ. So I just wanted to share that um, as I read that passage, that's something that came to me. First, we must commit to casting down idols. Society tends to make idols out of trends. However, as quickly as trends are elevated, so they are torn down. To be a godly influencer is to recognize that nothing should rival our pursuit of God's purpose. When we establish our priorities as God first and everything else second, it becomes easier to cast down the things that want to creep up as idols in our lives by demanding our attention, affection, and resources. So this goes back to Matthew 16 that we just read, where it speaks to taking up your cross and following Christ. And um, what does it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? When I read that, I find that being a follower of Christ is wonderful. It's a wonderful gift and also a wonderful responsibility. It comes with the call to lay yourself down and pick up Christ. Um, it comes with the responsibility to put Christ first, God first and everything else second and having to let go of idols which can be a number of things is anything that you basically worship some people's idols are their cars some people idolize their job or their house um some people idolize their spouse and their children but even in that case you got to cast that down and put christ first and so the responsibility of influence comes with the mandate of humility so everything comes next after god everything else will follow if we turn our attention our affection and our resources to him second we must commit to operating within our rightful roles matthew 25 14 through 29 makes it clear that when it comes to our giftings resources and abilities we are not the owners we are simply managers so go back and read that passage in your own time but it deals with um the five talents the stewardship of the talents so huh, there was a man traveling basically and he had his servants that he gave talents, which would have been um, however many years worth of wages in Greek money, basically. So he gave five talents to one servant, two talents to another, and one to another. The one with five talents took those talents and invested them, right? The one with two took those talents and invested them and as they had received five and two um as they had received five and two from the the man traveling they got back five talents and two talents that they had invested but the one that had one talent basically hoarded it like he failed to use those resources and he got punished for it um So, yeah, he um, basically got punished for hoarding or basically squandering those resources. And in that parable, the talents represent the resources that we get from God that we are expected to store. And so in reading that passage, I always think again about myself just being transparent. I don't want my talents and my gifts and the things that God has given me to go into the ground. I want to leave here empty, you know. So read Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 29 in your own time. Um, 
One of the biggest dangers of influencer culture is the adulation that comes with it that can deceive us into thinking more highly of ourselves or as the old people would say, causes us to get behind, but get beside ourselves or, or too big in the bridges to travel light. <laughs> and if we're not careful, we can begin to use other admiration to exalt ourselves above the message and the owner. This is also a trap to be careful of. There are so many influences out in the world as opposed to what we should do, how we should behave and conduct ourselves. And a lot of people, as the numbers start growing, the more hunger they have for that admiration and the more willingness they have to do any and everything to get it. But if you keep your eyes on the message and the owner, as it's referred to here, you're less likely to get into that trap because again, you're not performing for anybody and you are looking first to please God. All right. And then godly influences understand that admiration naturally comes from others when you are walking in your God given purpose. I'll read that again. Godly influence understands that admiration naturally comes from others when you are walking in your God given purpose. But like Jesus in John 6, it does not seek to leverage that admiration for selfish gains. So John 6 um, was our passage that dealt with the five loaves of bread and the two fishes. Even Jesus was careful not to exalt himself over the king of glory. And we can model that behavior. As big and bad as Jesus was, um, even he knew um, who was was in charge and he humbled himself um, to that and did not allow other people to exalt him um, in that way. Um, it's interesting just looking at all the different social media advice there's so many things people tell you to do to get likes to get followers but one key piece of advice I see periodically is to be yourself and be genuine um if you're walking in your God-given purpose and, and you are who he designs designed you to be the influence and the admiration will come. So I'm trying to personally lean into that again here. Um, if you know me, if you follow me, I'm not going to put on any airs. I'm not a person who seeks to be necessarily what other people aspire to, at least not on purpose. I want people to be the best version of them so I'm gonna be the best version of, of me um, and continue to try to do what God asked me to do and to be what he called me to be and if I can bless one person if I can influence one person to live and be better than they were the day before then my job is done so um, to be truly countercultural as godly influencers is to be intentional about pointing all successes and glory back to God. So with that being said, I just want to express gratitude to God for all that he's given me and all that he has allowed me to do and to thank God for each and every one of you who tuned in with me today. So I will pray us out. Father, in the name of Jesus, continue um, to bless us, Lord, to meet us where we are. Allow us to be what you called us to be and do what you called us to do, Lord. And as we seek you first, Lord, add all things unto us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
So that was day two of our devotional influencer, Finding Truth in the Trends. Day three, our last day of this devotional, deals with the topic. Let's see. The ultimate role model. Okay. And we'll be dealing with scriptures, Philippians chapter two, verses four through eight and John chapter 13, verses one through 17. So again, if you want to follow along um, and see some of my notes on this devotional, do join us at Uversion. Yes, in the Uversion app at the link below uh, and join us or or join us at bible.com via pc also um next week i will have the recap for this devotional available on my blog macthemaverick.com so join me back here tomorrow as we talk about the ultimate role model love you all and see you next time Thank <laughs> you.